Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin this hour with an update on an eight-year-old girl from Airway Heights who was discovered dead in the back of a U-Haul truck last month. We do want to warn you, details from this case may be disturbing to hear. The girl's adoptive parents were in court for the first time this afternoon. Crime 2's Kyle Simchuk has been tracking this case from the very beginning. He was in court today where new details have been revealed. Kyle? Well, it's hard to imagine an eight year old child weighing just 26 pounds, but that's what the medical examiner determined in their report. How this alleged abuse went on for so long is still unclear, but court documents show the child died in September. But the couple said they held on to the body for months because they, quote, wanted to spend more time with her. They drove to a funeral home in Mitchell, South Dakota in December. Police there called Airway Heights PD after finding the child's body in the back of a U Haul trailer. Now, months before this, neighbors in Airway Heights reported the couple multiple times and school counselors were worried since the eight year old had not been in class for several months. Between February and March, police attempted to make contact with the couple at least five times, but no one came to the door. And in August, an officer did observe the eight year old breathing in her bed a month before her death. Now, when arrested, Kermoyarov reportedly told police the child was tied up for four to six hours a day and that Miller would smash her toes with a hammer when she was acting up. He said they didn't call an ambulance the day she died because they thought it would take too long, according to court documents. The couple is now charged with murder, criminal mistreatment, and unlawful imprisonment. A judge today set both of their bonds at $1 million. Live outside the Spokane County Courthouse, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. In other top stories tonight, the murder trial for Nathan Beal. He's the man accused of killing a man who is living on the streets of Spokane before also murdering his ex-wife in 2020 is nearing an end. This afternoon, Beal took the stand in his own defense. Today, the prosecutor showed a new video that he says proves Beal is the only possible suspect. The new video shown today gives a view of the east entrance into the alley where the murder took place. The defense has argued that other people were seen near the crime scene that day, but this new video shows only one person actually going into the alley on the east side. Prosecutors rested their case this afternoon and just about an hour ago, the defendant took the stand. He is still testifying right now at this hour. Crem 2 is at the courthouse and we will have an update coming up tonight on Crem 2 News at 5 and 6. In the meantime, tonight, Pullman police are investigating the death of a WSU freshman over the weekend. We now know the identity of that student who was found inside a dorm building on Sunday afternoon. 19 year old freshman Luke Tyler, Luke Morgan Tyler from Redmond was identified by the Whitman County coroner. The WSU police chief Gary Jenkins told Crem 2 they are currently investigating, although said there's no evidence of foul play at this time. They are asking the community to avoid speculating on how Morgan died. A go GoFundMe set up to help with funeral expenses has already raised several thousand dollars. The Washington State Department of Health says there is a critical need for blood donations in the state. This comes after the combination of winter weather and cold and flu season wreaking havoc on blood supplies all across the U.S. January is National Blood Donor Month and the Department of Health is urging donors to donate to help combat the shortage. They say there is a specific need for younger volunteers willing to commit to multiple donations a year. Donations are important for standard medical treatment and critical life-threatening conditions and injuries. Spokane Valley Fire Department says 2022 was an unprecedented year for service. The department says crews responded to tens of thousands of calls. Crem 2's Janelle Finch is joining us here in the studio tonight to share more about how increased calls are affecting the department's resources. Janelle? Whitney, the Spokane Valley Fire Department says in 2013, crews responded to 13,000 calls for service. Almost 10 years later, the department is responding to an additional 10,000 calls in the year, an increase that comes with its fair share of costs. The department says in 2022, crews responded to nearly 19,000 emergency medical service calls, over 1,000 car accidents, 70 structure fires, and 80 wildfires. December 2022 also broke records with the number of incidents in one month. Fire Chief Frank Soto Jr. says the department averages 67 calls in one day. Last month, the department says there were two days with over 100 calls in a single day, something that's never happened before. Deputy Chief Zach Bond explains how more calls lead to more wear and tear on firefighters and equipment. 
it's the amount of work that we're able to put into that 24-hour period that is being affected. Clearly, we're using more diesel fuel. Clearly, we're using more supplies to be able to do what we need to do. But in terms of personnel, we're just working our firefighters harder and harder. The department says the number of calls and costs of diesel fuel has taken a toll on the annual budget. The department projects fuel costs will lead to 40% over budget this year. To add some perspective, 2021 fuel costs caused the department to go 14% over budget. In 2020, the department was on budget. Spokane Valley voters will vote to renew the maintenance and operations levy on February 14th. The department says this levy keeps stations open, replaces old equipment, and hires more firefighters. This vote would secure funding for the next four years. In the studio, Janelle Finch, Crump 2 News. All right, Janelle, thank you very much. Well, the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office will continue to police the streets of Hayden, and that force is getting bigger. County commissioners approved an agreement that will add three more deputies and more funding, at least through September. After that, we're told there is more funding and police force coming, but will it be enough for a city experiencing so much growth? We're taking a look in our continuing Boomtown series. That's coming up tonight on Crime 2 News at 6. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk weather right now because it sounds like today is the day and snow is on the way for the weekend. Our chief meteorologist Jeremy Lagu is joining us now. Sounds like for the next several days we're getting quite a punch of weather. Yeah, I'm still ironing out some of the exact details in the forecast, but we know the overall picture quite well. First, it's going to be snow and rain. Then it's going to be colder temperatures moving in with a lot of wind. And then we have another round of snow and some serious wind. And then we have a huge drop in temps. Right now, we have winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings in effect basically all day Friday. This starts long before the sun comes up and we have some major impacts on our morning commute. So let's walk through what exactly is going on. Storm moving in from the north brings about a big cold front, a big drop in temperatures and enough energy that we're talking a serious bout of snow. So kind of starts tonight. I think in the middle of the night we see it pick up. Then watch what happens here. This forecast model keeps it all as snow and a wintry mix for us here in Spokane. We will see that fall overnight in early tomorrow morning. I think this is kind of likely. Notice it tapers off after the morning commute. So the biggest impacts are going to be that morning commute. Then we catch a break throughout the day on Friday and then we get hit with another round early Saturday morning and then that moves out and that's when we see the wind pick up and the cold take over. We're talking enough wind that we have blowing snow near zero visibility in some areas and the likely widespread power outages from down trees and tree limbs as temperatures drop. How much snow? Well, this is where it gets tricky. I'm saying one to two. I'm putting us on the low side and low elevations, but it's a wet, heavy, slushy snow. Then as temperatures drop in the days to come, what winds up happening is everything freezes. Everything. It all freezes. 